From the outset of the 2008 college football season, Al Groh's Virginia Cavaliers adopted a we, us, and ours mentality designed for players and coaches alike to share the responsibility for all team progress and results. This collective approach served Virginia well as the Cavaliers rallied numerous times throughout the fall campaign when others had counted them out. It has long been a Virginia tradition to schedule outstanding non-conference opponents, and in 2008, the Cavaliers' full schedule was ranked as the nation's number one most difficult in the Sagarin rankings. A season in which 11 of Virginia's 12 opponents played in the postseason began with a massive challenge against the venerable West Coast program. In one of the most electric settings ever in Scott Stadium's storied past, the University of Southern California Trojans stormed into Charlottesville for the season opener. The Cavaliers were competitive in the game's early stages, and Michael Simpson's touchdown late in the first quarter kept Virginia's upset hopes alive. But the third-ranked Trojans proved too experienced for the younger Cavaliers. The following Saturday pitted Virginia against the eventual FCS national champion Richmond Spiders. It was a homecoming of sorts for longtime Al Groh assistant Mike London, whose inaugural season as head coach at his alma mater proved to be the greatest in that school's history. With the Cavaliers wearing their throwback uniforms to honor the 1989 ACC championship team, the matchup proved to be a classic defensive battle. Virginia held a 3-0 lead after three quarters, and for the game, the Cavaliers held the Spiders to only 19 yards rushing on 27 attempts, an average of about two feet per carry. Defensive end Matt Conrath would go on to be named to the College Football News All-Freshman team, terrorize the Richmond offense with one and a half sacks, one tackle for a loss, a pass breakup, and a blocked field goal. Appropriately, it was a defensive standout in co-captain Vic Hall who sealed the 16-0 shutout and scored the game's final points. Vic Hall to the end zone! Touchdown, Cavaliers! The emergence and re-emergence of Cavalier gridiron heroes was a recurring theme throughout the 2008 season. Wide receiver Kevin Ogletree, out all of 2007 with a knee injury, was stronger, faster, and even more elusive in 2008 than in his banner season two years ago. Ogletree's 51-yard score in the first quarter against Maryland on October 4th broke an offensive drought and was the first salvo in the Cavaliers' onslaught against the Terrapins. KO scored a pair of touchdowns and recorded more than 100 yards receiving against Maryland for the second time in his career. The Maryland game was also a breakthrough performance for redshirt sophomore quarterback Mark Farica. Climbing a considerable distance on the depth chart in just a few short months, Farica's masterful performance was marked by 25 completions and 34 attempts for 226 yards and his first career rushing touchdown. Now Verica takes the snap out of the shotgun, holds on to it himself, going to try and run for it. He tries to get the corner. He turns the corner, leans ahead. He is going to be in. Touchdown. The 31 to nothing victory over Maryland was a consummate team effort. Eight different Cavaliers caught at least one pass and six different ball carriers, led by Cedric Pierman's 17 carries for 110 yards, combined to gain 201 yards on the ground. Following the graduation of Chris Long, the nation's best defensive end and overall number two pick in the NFL draft, many doubted Virginia's ability to muster the type of suffocating defense typical of an Al Gro team. But with its second shutout of the season, Virginia's orange crush defense was quickly earning widespread respect. Co-captain Clint Sintum, named the ACC's Defensive Lineman of the Week, proved to be one of many Cavaliers ready to fill the need for spectacular, game-changing plays. It's going to be Turner. Here comes the pressure from the near side. Clint Sintum puts the sack on at the 36-yard line. 
five sits him at. On October 11th, UVA faced another stiff challenge in East Carolina. Having already beaten Virginia Tech and West Virginia, the Pirates arrived in Scott Stadium as the heavy favorites. It looked to be an uphill struggle early on for Virginia, with East Carolina gaining favorable field position. But the Cavalier defense refused to yield more than a pair of field goals, and the 6 to nothing deficit was quickly erased as time ran out in the first quarter. Phillips going to the right side, they hand off to Pierman. Pierman tries to get around that right corner. He breaks the tackle across the 25 and the 30. He's rumbling down the far sideline. Look out! Goodbye, Cedric Pierman takes it all the way. Touchdown, Virginia! With the team's trading possessions at the start of the second quarter, it was nearly five minutes of game time until Pierman touched the ball again. Handoff will go to Pierman. Pierman around the left side. He's got an opening again. Here we go. Cedric Pierman across the 30 to the 20. 10, 5, touchdown, Virginia. A 60-yard run for Cedric Pierman to go with his 79-yard scamper just moments ago. Pierman's dashes down the sidelines electrified the crowd and reminded the Cavalier faithful that number 37 was blessed with both power and speed. Against East Carolina, the running reverend was a man on a mission. The senior co-captain inspired his teammates and led a second-quarter outburst that gave Virginia a 28-6 halftime lead. Despite the Cavaliers' first-half fireworks, East Carolina would not surrender until a swarming and relentless defense made the Pirates walk the plank. Field two receiver set to the left, takes the snap, play action pass, going to roll to his opposite side. Here comes the pressure, and he's sacked by Antonio Appleby at the six-yard line. Virginia's rolling. Linebackers Antonio Appleby and John Copper combined for 20 tackles, with Appleby recording one of six Virginia sacks. Clint Sintum added a pair to his total, and Alex Field... John Kevin Dolce and Matt Conrad all stormed the ECU pocket as the Cavalier pass rush was relentless throughout the day. As East Carolina clawed its way back into the game, Conrad's sack and forced fumble proved crucial and set the stage for the game's final heroics from Scott Dakey and John Phillips. It's going to be Robert Randall, and they're going to fake it. First Dakey throw into the end zone. He oh, yes. Phillips. Touchdown! Virginia, a little trickery as the Cavaliers catch ECU completely off guard. Despite back-to-back victories over Maryland and East Carolina, Virginia was still considered the underdog the following Saturday when 18th-ranked North Carolina arrived in Charlottesville. This year's version of the South's oldest rivalry was a defensive slugfest in the tradition of the greatest heavyweight bouts. The teams traded blows throughout, and when the dust settled, a pair of Cavalier linebackers stood out with career performances. With 16 total tackles, including 10 solo stops, senior John Copper was everywhere, while redshirt junior Darren Childs was equally impressive with nine solo tackles in his first significant action on the college gridiron. Here's a handoff in a big hit by Childs as he blows up Chandron right at the 21-yard line. Virginia's defense thwarted a number of Carolina drives with well-timed big plays. Safety Byron Glaspie's interception of a Cameron Sexton pass at the Cavaliers' 17-yard line was crucial. For the fourth game in a row, Clint Sintum recorded at least one sack. That nine-yard loss early in the third quarter was followed by yet another game-changing play by redshirt freshman nose tackle Nick Jenkins. With a straight drop back, looking down the field throw, just dumps yes, this one yes. intercepted. Nick Jenkins picks it off at the 35, leans to the 34. The big defensive lineman. Jenkins' first career interception set up Virginia's first score of the day, a 37-yard field goal. Also a career first for true freshman Robert Randolph. With only nine first downs in the first 58 minutes of the game, Virginia's offense had one final chance for redemption as the clock ran down in the fourth quarter. Starting from their own 18-yard line, the Cavaliers' two-minute drill never looked better. As Mark Verica connected with four different receivers over the next eight plays. 
Needing a touchdown to tie the game, Verica handed to Pierman and let the Gladys Virginia native do the rest of the work. Out of the eye for more formation. Verica hands off. Pierman around the left oh, side. Yes. He's in. Touchdown, Virginia. In overtime, Verica connected with co-captain John Phillips and the big tight end carried his team to the two-yard line. With little doubt who would get the ball next, the Cavaliers punched it in, and the Scott Stadium crowd erupted in celebration. Here's the snap, handoff to Pyramid. Pyramid around the left side. He's in! He dives! Touchdown, Virginia! The Cavaliers will win it! It's over! Oh, what a win! Virginia wins it in overtime! Wahoo fans, you can celebrate tonight! Looking to complete a perfect October... Virginia traveled to Atlanta to take on number 21, Georgia Tech. Tech boasted one of the nation's top rushing offenses, and the key to the Cavaliers' game plan was to limit their opponent's options. A one-man wrecking crew, nose tackle Nate Collins was a human wall in the middle of the line of scrimmage. Time and again, Collins and his line mates stuffed the Tech attack and eliminated the space between the tackles. But this was a game where Virginia would again have to fight back from an early deficit to take the lead. Trailing 14-3, the Cavaliers again relied on the legs of Pierman and the hands of multiple receivers. Then at 11-17 of the second quarter, Kevin Ogletree found pay dirt on a 14-yard toss from Verica. With nine different players catching at least one pass, Virginia demonstrated once again that it would spread the workload among many in its downfield attack. Georgia Tech's fast start looked to be a series of events in the distant past when senior Maurice Covington raced across the Tech secondary to snare a Verica pass for a 34-yard touchdown in the third quarter. That gave Virginia a 17-14 lead and offered the defense an opportunity to dig in against the Ramblin' Wreck. Under center, takes the snap, straight drop back, looking to run. He's got nowhere to go. He's going to get wrapped up in the backfield as Virginia's defense was all over. Over the final 46 minutes of the game, Georgia Tech managed only three points on a field goal with 734 remaining in regulation. Just enough to tie the game at 17. Starting at its own 30, Virginia began what would prove to be the game-winning drive with a 13-yard completion to big country John Phillips. Four plays later, Cedric Pierman produced his longest run on a day where he gained 118 yards on the ground. Pierman was unquestionably one of the nation's most determined runners, and the all-ACC tailback took full advantage of a maturing offensive line led by left tackle Eugene Monroe. Number 75 was arguably the top offensive tackle in the nation. Projected as a first-round NFL draft choice, Monroe was named an AP, Walter Camp, and Rivals.com All-American. The senior standout was also the 2008 recipient of the Jacobs Blocking Trophy, presented to the top blocker in the ACC as voted on by the league's coaches. It was the 11th time a Cavalier received the Jacobs Trophy. With interior lineman B.J. Cavill, Jack Shields, and Austin Pastor seeing their first significant playing time, Monroe's leadership and ability proved essential for a unit that allowed less than 1.4 sacks per game. Against Georgia Tech, Monroe's opposite pillar of protection, right tackle Will Barker, had his best game and was named ACC Offensive Lineman of the Week. It was, in fact, the collective efforts of the entire team that placed the Cavaliers at Opportunity's doorstep. The Georgia Tech three-yard line with 3.35 to play. Hand off to Pierman. He tries the right edge. Can he get to the end zone? He dives! Yes! He's in! Touchdown! Cedric Pierman! With time still remaining to mount a comeback, the Yellow Jackets' final drive was battered first by a blitzing Rodney McLeod. 
and then crushed entirely by the ball hawking wizardry of Vic Hall. Drops back to throw. He feels the pressure. Throws over the middle. Yes. Oh, baby! Vic Hall comes up with a pick, and the Cavaliers are going to sneak out of here with a win. Ultimately, the Cavaliers' season was marked by close games that often turned on a single play where the margin of victory or defeat was narrow. It was a season that saw the emergence of young players like Corey Mosley, Chase Minifield, Jared Green, and true freshman putter Jimmy Howell. Veterans Kerry Koch and Denzel Burrell also seized the opportunity to deliver big plays. And Byron Glassby, John Copper, and Antonio Appleby closed out remarkable careers as three of the Cavaliers' most reliable defenders. Within the team-first framework espoused by Coach Crow, a number of Cavaliers were exceptional. Whether on defense, special teams, or offense, Vic Hall's uncanny ability to invent one magical play after another was limited only by the time on the clock and the number of games in the season. Quarterback keeper finds a hole. He's across the 30 to the 25. Look out. Vic Hall down to the 5. He's going to go all the way to the end zone. He's in. Touchdown, Virginia. Vic Six players, including Eugene Monroe. Cedric Pierman and Kevin Ogletree earned all ACC honors. John Phillips joined Monroe as a first-team selection and carried on the Virginia tradition of outstanding play at the tight end position with 48 receptions for 385 yards and two touchdowns. Sophomore corner Razai Dowling earned second-team honors and proved that he is one of the most athletic defensive backs in the country. Also named the College Football News All-Sophomore Second Team, Dowling's nose for the ball and his ability to deliver punishing hits marked him as one of the Cavaliers' rising stars. Linebacker Clint Sintum, a constant tear on defense, also earned all-conference honors. With 11 quarterback sacks, Sintum finished the season second in the conference. And with 28 sacks in his career, he became the all-time leader among Cavalier linebackers. Virginia's never-say-die attitude has remained a constant under head coach Al Groh, and the team's refusal to crack under any circumstance has made them one of the nation's most formidable teams. Many of the 72 underclassmen on the Cavaliers roster saw significant game action for the first time in 2008. And the experience of the season bodes well for both the immediate and long-term future of the University of Virginia football program.